I am Brother John Allen Green, a Franciscan friar and a hermit from Johannesburg, and this is my weekly podcast, Reflections from the Hermitage. Fear, fury, and rage at our helplessness, coupled to hope. These are, I think, the facts of our lives. The fury of the wind in the storm. The wind which is also against the disciples. The wind that leads them into fear. The disciples gaze upon the image of Jesus and see a spirit, a ghost, and they are fearful. Peter gazes upon the wind, and he is also fearful. Why does this suddenly sound strange to my ears? Peter's not gazing upon the fury of the storm. No, he's gazing upon the wind. And his fear overcomes his hope, overcomes his faith. Throughout God's revelation, there are two things that are clear and are contained in the story of the wind as the Spirit of God. The wind is connected with God, with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God that is breathed into each one of us, the Spirit of God that hovers over the water, bringing order out of the chaos, bringing something where there should be nothing. As a strong believer and proponent of the Spirit and wisdom of our fathers and mothers of ages past, Something suddenly doesn't sit quite right. It's almost as though we continue digging ever ever more deeply into the same well of wisdom, not recognizing that at the same time the sand is trickling out of the hole in our bucket. Looking upon the chaos and the dreadful affairs of our land and our puppet leaders, it appears that fear and faith have been disconnected from each other. Religion, like faith, stripped of its inherent value, just as the gospel has been stripped of its flesh, the very word of God. Instead, faith now bears a badge of honor, forged into the awards for courage, valor, and success. Fear is no longer any part of our faith. Fear has become the food of disordered appetites gazing into our smartphones. Fear is now the stuff of action movies, not stories about our faith. We rather prefer stories where we beat fear, where we outsmart it, get the best of it. But white, gut-wrenching fear is the stuff of our nightly news, which likes to begin with blood and gore, because the data shows we are drawn to that. Ratings go up when death is grisly and when there are close-up photographs. Fear is all out there, and I am safe within my high walls and my electric fences. No, fear is no part of my faith. Fear is for those who are the losers. Fear is for those who cannot afford their private armies and the security guards at the gates of their mansions. Fear enrages us, so that our helplessness and desperation beat on the beaches of the waves of despair. Faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus is always the antidote to such fear. No, it doesn't prevent the conditions in which these fears arise. Faith is not only a way of living. Faith is also a way of dying. It is only when I am able to see beyond my own death, into that life beyond death, that truth becomes the value that truly sets me free. You, you see, we are in the midst of a carrion of corruption, and fear and fury is all around us. But the truth does set us free. Jesus, the Christ, is the truth that allows me life beyond my own death, that sees hope beyond my current despair, and that sees an order beyond all who would seek the chaos of darkness, all who he hide 
in the shadows of that darkness. But the Spirit of God overcame the primordial chaos, and the Spirit of God also overcomes the fury that surrounds us. This is not some simple and naive faith that believes I am separate from the suffering that is all around me, but rather a faith that leads me into the heart of terror of history, to allow myself to become the, that raw material, that very stuff that is used to transform our world into the new kingdom of God. It's not my courage or my endurance that is used in this transformation. It is only my faith in the ultimate goodness and love that resides in the heart of the Trinity. This is being true to myself in the image of God, the image who is the incarnated Word of God. Everything else is but an illusion. No matter how skilled the storytellers and the praise singers may be, truth is truly symphonic. Lies always distort the harmony. The closer I am to the source of that first note, that God's word, the calmer the chaos around me becomes, until the storm within me is also calmed. May the Lord grant you peace.